Hi, welcome to another example in my series on mixed integration. Now, in this example, we've got to integrate 2 over x squared minus 1 with respect to x. So how are we going to do it? Well, one of the first things I notice is that it's a fraction. And whenever I get a fraction, I always look to see whether we've got something of this particular type, where you've got your denominator, which is, say, some function of x, in this case, x squared minus 1. And if you differentiate it, does it appear in the numerator? Or does a constant times that differentiated function appear in the numerator? Because if it does, what we end up is that constant times the natural log of the mod of the function of x plus a constant of integration. So you should always try and check out this idea when you're integrating a fraction. And I always hold that normally in high priority. So here we've got x squared minus 1. And if I differentiate x squared minus 1, I get 2x. So I don't see any multiple of 2x on the top. I don't see 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, whatever on the top, just simply 2. So I know that it's not this type. So what type is it? Well, the next check I would do is to see whether the denominator factorizes. And it does. This is the difference of two squares. This is equal to the integral of 2 over x minus 1 times x plus 1 with respect to x. Now, if it factorizes and you've got something like this, then this type of integral is what we call a partial fraction type. So, I'm assuming that you're familiar with partial fractions. If not, you can always go on my website and just have a look at how to do partial fractions like this. Now, being partial fractions, what I'll do is I'll just work on the side and show you how we can change this. Alright, so we've got 2 over x minus 1, x plus 1. It's going to look a bit small so that I can fit it in. All right. Now, this is identical to, these are linear factors underneath. So we would put a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1, where a and b are constants. Then I'd multiply through both sides in the usual way by x minus 1, x plus 1. And what I would get would be 2 is identical to a times x plus 1 and b times x minus 1. And then I've got to work out a and b, and I can do this by substituting a value for x that makes this bracket 0. So I can do that by letting x equal minus 1. So I'll say when x equals minus 1, what we've got is 2 on this side. So therefore we'd have 2 equals. This goes to 0, and then I've got minus 1, and the minus 1 here is minus 2, minus 2b. So that means it follows that b equals minus 1. So we've got our constant b. Now I can make this bracket equal 0 by letting x equal 1. So if we let x equal 1, just say when x equals 1, what we've got is 2 again. So we'd have therefore 2 equals 1 and 1 here is 2, 2a. This bracket goes to 0, so we have no b's there. And so solving this equation, divide both sides by 2, gives us a equals 1. So what we've got is that 2, all divided by x minus 1, x plus 1, is identical to a over x minus 1. So in other words, 1 over x minus 1. And then... Be careful not to write plus here because b is minus 1, so we've got minus 1 over x plus 1. Alright, so what I can do now is express 
this fraction, impartial fractions, like this. So what we've got is the integral of 1 over x minus 1 and minus 1 over x plus 1. Now there's a couple of terms here, so we need this in brackets and we need to put the with respect to x on the end. Now, how do I integrate this fraction? Well, again, same argument as before. Whenever you get a fraction, check out this idea. Differentiating the bottom, does it give you the top? Or a multiple of the top? Well, if I differentiate x minus 1, I get 1. And that is on the top. So this is going to be a log, a natural log type. So what we've got here is the natural log of the mod of x minus 1. Then we've got minus, this minus here, and when, then we've got to integrate this. And again, being a fraction, check out whether differentiating the denominator gives the top. It does, because differential of x is 1. So it's just simply the natural log of the mod of x plus 1. And don't forget your constant of integration plus c. Now you could leave it like that, but you could use the law of logs. That is the log of one value minus the log of another value. Log of a, say, minus log of b is equivalent to the log of a over b. So in this case, we're dealing with natural logs, so it's going to be the natural log of the mod of x minus 1 all divided by x plus 1 and then plus that constant of integration c. You will find some people will take this even further. Your constant here could be written as a log constant, a natural log constant in this particular context. Let me show you. We've got that first term here and plus c, you could call that plus the natural log of another constant. Let's say a. We'll even put that in a mod sign. All right. Then what we could do now is just simply use the multiplication law. When you add logs, this is the same as the natural log of a times x minus 1 over x plus 1. So you get that. All right? So that's an alternative to any of these answers up here. But I leave it up to you, or whatever the context of the question is, to be able to put it in the appropriate form. But essentially, use partial fractions when you've got something like this to integrate. Okay, so I hope you've been able to follow that example.